Good morning everyone, welcome back to another video. We are back on the kitchen extension. Hope everyone is doing well. We are doing a little bit of plastering today. So we've got a little bit of bonding to do and a little bit of skimming, just a little bit. We're actually doing more tiling than I thought we were doing. So there's not actually much skimming to do. Um, but um, thank you for your concerns, especially the one who emailed me with all the threats of reporting me to authorities for all different reasons and so on. And all the assumptions that were made, which is amazing how many people watch a couple of clips, a few second clips on YouTube and make the most assumptions from work by watching from a, a TV screen. Uh, people can tell you how many millimeters something is uh, from watching a video and usually they are completely wrong. Um, I get accused of not having shelves under the oven, which are clearly there, but you can't see them obviously because they're underneath the oven. Um, but yeah, you know, we love the haters, we love everybody. And the guy who's been emailing me and giving me the threats, apparently you're the top kitchen fitter in the UK with, with 150 million years of experience. Why don't you come down and work with us and give back to your community? Apparently you're retiring now. So come back and give back to the community Give back to the young guys who are learning. Come and share your wisdom with us instead of ranting on Facebook and attacking people and uh, threatening them with uh, all sorts of nonsense. But anyway, we digress. We're going to get into the work today. All right, guys. So Ken is putting on some SBR here. We're going to do a little bit of bonding. I'm just going to be literally just bonding this little area here. And then um, I'm just going to skim it. So the only area that's actually been painted now is actually just this little area here on this section here and just this little bit in a section here. Everything else has been tiled, including all around the windows, uh, all around the reveals, it's all gonna be tiled now. So um, we don't need to, I was gonna skim, I was gonna skim all these areas here, um, you know, <clears throat> but I will fill them all up um, just so it's nice and flat, things like this. And you put some bonding in and all that stuff and uh, we'll just get it all ready for, for tiling. Um, yeah, but otherwise that is pretty much it. Also guys, I didn't have this yesterday, but now I have some more details of the actual 3D drawings, just to show you guys a little bit more what the kitchen's supposed to look like. So you can see here now, this is what the customer wants. They want this all area tiled. So originally we thought it was painting it, so we're gonna tile all this. Um, but we're not gonna be tiling it like that. We're gonna be doing sort of a, uh, herringbone pattern is what we're going to be doing here so that'll be fun um or could we have to do all around the arch and everything also this is something that uh, i got on the nasty email as well from mr wren himself i uh, was told that we shouldn't put the microwave here which is exactly what uh, how wren themselves designed it i actually spoke to them on the phone yesterday because we were having problems in getting it to fit in the sizing and because we were actually trying to do it put them uh we're trying to put the oven down the bottom and put the microwave on top it didn't fit and we spoke to ren and this is how they designed it and they actually told us what shelf went here and what shelf went here so we had one shelf here which is the wider or the larger shelf and we have the shorter shelf for the microwave this is exactly what ren told us to do um but we've been abused and apparently we're not doing it right but anyway this is basically what it's supposed to look like when it's finished. So uh, this pipe has been tapped off. Again, people watch videos and you see something and you assume that is how it is. People are in the middle of working, guys. So just relax, chill out. There is other people working here. We have other specialists as well. Yeah, so please stop assuming everything from what we put out. Yeah, that's not why we do it. We do it for people to enjoy and also where we can help people to learn things, we do that. But we don't put it on here to get grief. Just a quick one as well. A lot of people have been talking about damp. I know I mentioned that before. Um, I said rising damp, but I don't think this is rising damp. I did check the walls and they are dry. They are not cold. I'm pretty confident this is not actual, uh, there's no actual damp here actually. I um, also got the damp meter out, so I'm gonna show you guys a couple of things and show you how they work, just so people can see. So I've just put some PVA or SBR on this little area. So obviously it's wet. So I'll show you what it should look like when the, when the wall is wet. So what we do, press this in right real hard. And you can see straight away that's gone off the scale. So 
that's what we're running right at the scale okay the one on the right hand side is the plus plus the uh reading um so anything from point eight upwards from point eight upwards is what we would consider uh moisture or wet um actually i've got the book for this man i thought this actually actually shows you in here so if you look here you can see plaster here so between 0.8 and 2.3 is considered wet anything below is dry okay so as i said let's try this one again so push it in pull it out and it gives you about five seconds of readings so you can see it's off the scale that's why it's flashing so let's try a dry area like here same thing So if you look here, we've got just over 0.6. Um, I think it's actually 0 0.6 and a half when I read the, the meter in the book. I think it's about 0 0.6 and a half. It's just under seven. Let's try another dry area, like this area with the paint. Push the pins in and pull it out. And we've got the same thing. We've got a little bit more there on this one. But this is an outside wall, so it's a colder wall. This is a cold wall on the outside. So let's look at this area here where a lot of people were saying I put the kitchen onto damp walls, which I know they're not damp. I'll show you here. So let's push it in here. Push it in hard. As we can see here, we're basically the same that we had up there, about 0 0.6 and a half. So it's actually drier than this wall that looks dry to me, or looks dry, because an outside wall is colder and it more than likely has more moisture in it than this wall is. So this is just a confirmation that these walls are dry, they're not damp, these are just stains, and uh, hopefully that's satisfied somebody. All right, guys, let's get on with the plastering. All right, guys, quick update. We've been busy, busy, busy. So we have done this wall, and I'm just pretty much doing the whole thing, really because we're going to tile all this is going to be tile and cabinets and tile but i've just hit it with some plaster just to give it something for the tile um just patch up those areas also did the same thing up here those areas that had bonding or <coughs> where the plaster had flaked off and then we chipped it off all here is going to be tiled as well so we just put some plaster on it and fill up all the gaps so it's nice and flat same thing up there we've done that as well and then just basically just filled in any little area so it's all sort of flat. As I said, all this is gonna be cabinets all the way across and then all under there's gonna be tiles. All around here is gonna be tiles. All around the window reveal is gonna be tiles. Uh, all around here is gonna be tiled again, as you can see. And just filled up all those bits where the plaster had come away before. So yeah, pretty much all done now. So we're gonna go off for lunch. Then we come in to do the self level. I'm gonna do the test again, especially on the bits that we just plastered, because I know it's hard for a lot of people to believe that anybody knows what they're doing, but I'm gonna show you guys again. So uh, let's find a wall that hasn't had any plaster on it. So let's get rid of this dry wall here. Let's go. So here we go. We have what? 0.65 again. 0.65 which is, seems to be quite standard because these are completely dry. As I said, it's an external wall, so it might even be more, have more moisture in it than an internal wall. Um, I don't really want to try any internal walls in the house because I end up po poking holes in it. But let's try somewhere all here. This is, we've also used a fast set um, plaster. I use fast set, so this is dry really, really quickly. Um, so there is no issues of wet working in the kitchen. Again, there's a lot of myths out there and um, sometimes we try to re-educate with a lot of myths. I know everybody knows their way and knows the best way and knows better than everyone else. But one thing a lot of people have to understand, when you are a general builder like myself and you're, you're working the whole services, for instance, you're doing the plastering, you're doing the kitchen, the cabinets, you're doing the plumbing, you're doing the, the flooring. We have to work methodical in a way that we can get a lot of work done in one day so i can't just come in and pull the self level and then go home because we have things to do otherwise the people's jobs are going to take forever 
and I know that because I hear the stories already all the time. Someone's doing the kitchen and it's taking four weeks and they haven't finished the kitchen yet. We come in and we get it done. So we can put base units in and skim the areas after. Sometimes that's how it's gonna work depending on what materials we got that day. Sometimes we're gonna have to self-level this little area and we can do it, it's not a problem. But anyway, moving forward. So this is being done with a, with a fast set plaster. It's, it's basically dry within about half an hour. Um, so there's not gonna be much moisture in it for very long, but there is now obviously. So we're gonna put it on here and show you guys what readings we get. It's probably gonna be off the charts. So poke holes in it. And as you can see, moisture. So for those of you who are going to say, well, your tester doesn't work, it needs calibrating, it works, yeah? This is damp. This area, and this is another thing, people assume because plaster is dark, that is damp. It doesn't mean it's damp just because it's dark, yeah? There's discoloration, it doesn't always mean it's damp. And as I said, I checked this before and I knew it wasn't damp. So this area, which you may think is damp, is completely dry and it's very warm. It's not wet, it's not cold. So let's do this area now. Push in, and there we go, pull out, and this is it here. Okay, so we are 0.7, I would say. So we're well under the minimum for dampness. Okay, so there we go again, confirmation on video, because I know a lot of people are gonna say, you don't know what you're talking about. But anyway, that's it guys. So we're shooting off for lunch, and then when we come back, we're gonna work on getting this floor done. We're gonna work our way out and then we'll leave it there. And when we come back, we can get on with the rest of the units. All right, guys, so, that's the drying now nicely. And uh, what we do now is we're gonna self lab the floor. So we've SPR'd it already and um, showing you, basically we're gonna work our way from that way, work our way out the back of the house and then um, we'll be be out of here so also um just showing you what we did here you can see with the legs we just put a little bit of tape around those legs in the front there i'm just going to blend the self level out there and we just take that tape off and that way none of the self level touches the legs not that it's a big deal but it's literally going to be about three four mil very fine layer on this because it is actually quite smooth it's just a few little lips um of plaster but yeah we're just gonna give it a quick uh, self level we'll pour from this way and we'll work our way we did fill in that bit here with some rapid set cement so that's all ready to go we're just going to do that now and work our way up that's how i do that and then i'll pass it to you all right last one yeah. <laughs> bro, you're the one that's the human tripod, but you mean Dean does that from from long time. So we you... you put it on camera, bro. Expose the man behind the camera with the camera. No, it's not. Yeah, it's still, Self-level and I feel like it's plastered on the wall one time. <laughs> show them, show them. Yeah. Someone just in the center of that could be there.
some more of the same thing. Hmm? On the middle of it. Yeah, some more, yeah. 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 No, in the middle of it. the sky blood you're gonna get down the channel demonetized fam <laughs> too much casting blood see them boy there and what are going for them boy there hey why are you trying to hide from the camera now yeah i ain't following you fam i don't think he's the main character you know different yes fam follow me fam i'm non-player character this way come out the yard fam Yeah, that one finish? Yeah, yeah fine. Let's go. Probably like what am I doing as well? Alright guys, our floor is self-leveled, as you can see, all the way down here. All the way in here where the shoes is going. The boys are having fun. As you can see. We didn't really need to go right under there, so obviously we save material, save the customer money because they're paying for it, so we don't like to waste money if we don't need to. But um, yeah, everything's good. And surprise, surprise, the kitchen is not damaged, guys. It's fine. But yeah, guys, that is it for us today. We are now out of here. So guys, that is it for today. So we are finished for the day. I am ready to go home, but just real quickly, I want to address a couple of things. You know, sometimes um, you do have to, a lot of things, you know, we let slide and a lot of things we tolerate and ignore and so on, but sometimes um, things have to be addressed. And um, two things are this, you know, so today's video, I, you know, I had a bit of fun. You know, I like to have a bit of banter. I don't take everything serious. So don't take everything I say serious, um, but you know, I know what I'm saying and why I'm saying it. And you know, as I said, I love, um, you know, I, I told you guys about how, I've, how I came up in the trades and uh, how I learned and learned from, you know, other people uh, essentially. And, um, and, and you know that I love to share knowledge. Um, I do that in the form of my videos. Sometimes I do specific tutorials and things to share information. Obviously I do Facebook lives as well. I haven't done a few in a week, a few in a while. I was actually trying to do one today but i uh, actually not going to be able to do it today because i'm going to get home too late which is often part of the reason why i don't get to do it because at the moment one of our projects is quite far away from home so i'm gonna have a long trek home through london traffic and stuff um so you know i love to uh be able to uh, answer questions and help people you know just a normal guy who's or all woman who's just trying to better their home or whatever or save some money or do things that maybe they might not be able to afford to be able to afford a tradesman to do and this is something i find that's more problematic with actually uh those of us who are within the trades um and many of us um i find we forget where we come from many of us forget that once upon a time we were uh tradesmen like the or apprentices like young kenneth and young tristan mj and guys like that and um we're very quick to forget that once upon a time we didn't know it all and once upon a time, we had to ask questions and we had to learn things. And people get very, very arrogant. I find a lot of tradesmen, I find I get very arrogant in that the way that they uh, share the knowledge that they have. And there's no better place to see that than on social media. Because social media is a place where everyone feels that they have the right 
uh, maybe because you support someone's channel like I was told today by watching their videos um, you feel you have the rights to talk to people a certain way uh, typically some way you would never speak to that person if you were you know around them which most people don't they tend to have a lot of energy on social media and stuff like that and it's something I think that even as human beings that we should check ourselves in why we do and why we say things we do I'll give you an example so I had one of you guys on here you're probably watching um, very disparaging comments and I'm also the time I ignore I've, I've, I've been called the n-word on, on, on YouTube and I ignore it it's not that big a deal for me a lot of stuff because I don't take things to heart like that um, but sometimes you know as the moderator of the channel people don't realize that I get to see the back end of everything so if I let's say for instance I click on someone's name YouTube gives me the entire list of all the comments that they've ever made on the channel so sometimes I might see someone who's made 10 20 comments and they're all negative you know and at this point it might be just the point I've had enough of you I might just block you or I might uh, give you a little bit of energy back in the comment section and I did that today or yesterday with one person and I had someone today who gave me this whole long-winded story about how they've been a follower for three years and um, they're not because of the way that I responded to this person um, they're going to withdraw their support from me um, and they've never commented and they felt the need to comment today and that thing was very interesting and this is something again as even us, us as people in society that we are very guilty of doing especially today in social media is that we'll say we support somebody but we we for instance you never comment every anything positive in three years so in three years you would watch someone working hard sharing information trying to create a community you would never once make a comment and say well done on something you've done a good job here keep it up whatever it is in a supportive way but the moment that something you feel negative you automatically now you can make a comment and that's something that we do a lot um, well, I'm probably guilty of it as well uh, you know um, we're very quick to be negative and judgmental but very slow to give praise and um, I just think that's a real flaw in man that we are you know I guess that's why the news is always negative we very very rarely have good news because most people are not interested as soon as there's a bad news there's a gossip there's a story everybody's interested but nobody's interested when good things are happening so that's one thing but secondly this particular person that I made the comment to that they didn't like um, I knew that I know the backstory which they don't know and you know some of you very very few I will say um, need to check yourselves because you go to under check yourself why you do certain things or why you react certain ways so for instance just because I disagree with somebody's somebody's uh, comments or whatever this person feel, felt the need to get my email address and to email me essentially threatening emails like not physical threatening emails but threatening to essentially try to ruin my business just because you don't agree with something I do in the kitchen like you have to question yourself why would you even do something like that you are forgetting that you're dealing with human beings we as content creators are human beings we have lives we have families we have employees we have mouths that we feed and we have money that we put into people's hands so where you some of you guys have this sort of uh, mentality that you want to destroy people and stuff like that you need to check yourself and, and 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 really check yourself of why you would even think that that would be something that would be normal to do and why are you so offended to that to that to that level because someone disagrees with your practices you know um so you know a lot of us and this is particularly something i find more in the tradesmen of a tradesman um we need to humble ourselves you know we need to humble ourselves uh, and also accept that we don't know everything i'm willing to put my hand up i do it often we don't know everything there's many times where people have corrected me of stuff 
and you guys have seen it I've never hidden any of my mistakes I'll go back I might go back the following day and I might recorrect it or do it a better way because I've been advised another way and that's how we learn and I do that I try to keep humble as possible um, but I'm not a pushover you know so please understand that you know so yeah I just wanted to sort of address that to just say look there's a no tolerance policy on certain behavior on this channel and once you exhibit in certain uh, behavior you will be blocked and if you want to leave the channel because you don't like the way I do something just leave you don't need to uh, announce your exit you don't need to tell me you're leaving I couldn't care less if you've got bad energy okay you're not gonna make or break the channel so guys yeah this is just my little rant it's once in a blue I'll do it but I just want to get something off my chest you know but for the 99.99% .99 of you I love you guys I really appreciate all the support you guys give all the comments all the likes the subscriptions the shares the memberships everything you know we really appreciate you and you're a big part of why I do the YouTube videos because if it was for a monetary purpose the amount of time that I put in the amount of time I take out of the day to film to edit um, and and do, respond to questions and do Facebook lives and all these different things it doesn't pay the amount of time and effort that I put in um, I'm almost I'm over 800 videos on YouTube now and if I count the hours and the amount of time it took to produce that I have not made that money back on ad revenue you know so it is a labor of love I really love the community I enjoyed making the videos and that's why I do it um, so be easy on your content creators please because there's a reason why a lot of people stop doing things like YouTube and stuff because they get sick and tired of the negativity that comes from although it be a small number of people but it affects a lot of people in a negative way fortunately for me I've got quite a strong back water for ducks back um, I don't take it too much to heart but I just felt like I should say something about it but guys that is it so I'm on my way home now hope you guys enjoyed this video and I shall see you on the next one take care thanks for watching